everyone, it's James. And Stephanie, and we are so excited for this one. That's right, we've got a true unicorn in the RV Definitely. industry in North America. We have finally found a safari condo. We've come in early to the early bird, wow, we're like super early, to the yes. early bird RV show <laughs> in Abbotsford, BC to review the safari condo XL Flex. And we have somebody with us, Francois, come on over. All right, this is Francois Hello, guys. Okay. Hello. Um, from Safari Condo. Yes. So, Francois, the biggest question we have about these is how does someone from the United States purchase a Safari Condo? What's the process like? First of all, uh, someone from the U.S. should buy his own van, then okay. bring it to us sort of two months before uh, we can start working on it. Okay. Then fly back home, wait a little bit again because it's a waiting game, yeah. come back to us once the van is converted to everyone's desire, and go back home, slowly and uh, surely. Okay. That's it. And, and do you guys handle any of the tax or...? Taxes will be paid once you'll be registering in your own state. So okay. basically, depending who, where you're from and what you, you've done with the van and how much you paid for, you'll be changing, the price will be changing. Okay. And you should also, should also talk to your insurance about that and all right. that kind of stuff to make sure that the van is not only a van, but a, a converted van. Make okay. sure that you're always covered. Okay. And I'm fascinated by your build process because we were talking earlier and you said that everything is an option. And yeah. I love that idea. You can get the awning, mm -hmm. no awning. You can get the mi microwave, no microwave. Safari Condo wishes not to force their customer to buy things they don't like. Yeah. Depending what you do for sports or activities, where you want to go, if you want four by fours and awning, like we were speaking before, yes. uh, it just depends. So you just put in there where you want. Speaking of sports and where you went, the way you guys first came on our radar is we have a friend who has one of these, mm -hmm. and it's got, you've got a, a bike right. You can get four bikes four underneath bikes. the bed yes. in this in this thing. Bikes, surf bars, anything you and want. And that's it's a be. factory option. Yeah, factory options that we we created for those ones that want to bring their own toys there and safely. And that's a tray that rolls yeah. out. A big tray that you just pull out and then wow. so you don't struggle with anything that's in there. Basically. Great. Right. Well, I am excited to get crawling all over this thing. So Inside and on We're probably going to be underneath it. Is that <laughs> yeah, okay? It's okay. You can go everywhere you want. All, all right, right. Let's, let's go. Go check it out. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so this coach is very unique and we're going to see a lot of unique things in as we go along. Yeah, so I'm going to talk fast, so pay attention and watch closely. <laughs> First thing we've got unique here, there's a full length awning, yeah, but look over the slider door. That's a little rubber gaskety protrusion thing and it's there to keep water from running down the side of the coach and onto you when you open that door if oh, it's raining. Okay, handy. Yeah, so considering that that's 90% of the time what we use our awning for is to put it out a foot, you know, just to keep the rain out. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it kind of substitutes for the awning in, in the rain. Yeah. All right, so now a full length running board all the way from the front to the back. And notice that center section is bumped out, right? Because that's where you want a little bit more of a step. Yeah, and this is very unique too. It's not electric, but look at that. It just manually slides in and out. Bam. Nothing to break, yeah. nothing to gum up or not work. It's always going to work on you. Okay, so towards the back of the coach, there's this little vent here. Mm, like a little circle? Yeah. Now that is actually, that tells me that they've got lead acid batteries here because that is a vent for a sealed battery compartment that's inside the van. Okay, right. So interesting. Um, so we've got a Truma on this, but it is not the Truma Combi. Ah, yes. That's the AquaGo. Okay, so, and that is just a water heater. It's not the combination heater, water heater. Right, it's a, they've got something different for heat, which we'll get to, but that's tankless and instant. So no waiting 20 minutes for your water to heat up. Nice, okay. All right, so now here we are on the back, which is pretty normal, but there are a couple things that I want to point out here. So yeah, there's a trailer hitch, great, but it's got a seven pin wiring yeah, harness. Right, and that's what we have on Lance. Yeah, ours. but I had to add that. Oh, okay, okay. And it's got a four pin too, if you have a trailer with a four pin hitch. And then the other thing we've got back here is a sewer hose storage. I liked this. This was an interesting Well, add. it's in the back and out of the way, and you're gonna be back there. I made sure that was clean before I touched <laughs> it. Um, you're gonna make you're gonna be back there anyway, so yeah. there we go. Yeah. Now the other thing on the back is there's no ladder. And I really wanted to see on top. So we got creative and uh, opened the door. I stood on the bed. We had you and Francois <laughs> hold me up. And so here we go. This is what's on the roof. So we'll start at the back and there's a, a plumbing vent over there. Okay, fine, pretty standard. 
Um, we have got, and I love the way these are all lined up. Oh, very symmetrical. The, yes. Right in the center. <laughs> they're right, they're after my heart with this. So we've got a Dometic Penguin, and we've got a Max Air Fan. And check that out. We've got not one. One, two, three, four solar panels. 100, 400 watts of solar power. Very on nice. This thing. Okay. Yeah. And now what you're going to check out is what I thought I saw, and you confirmed. There's an itty bitty fairing on the front yeah, of the Yeah, it's hard to see here, but there is a fairing there that's protecting those solar panels. Yeah, so. and keeping gunk from getting, like, blown under them and whatever but 400 watts pretty good hey staff all right so now i'm back down on the ground and this is the driver's side yeah Not it's a little tight back there so yeah so that first thing there that, that's with a lock on it that's those are your water connections okay so no one's going to mess with your water um 30 amp shore power fairly standard for class b but now here Another little manual thing. Another full full length running board all the way from the front to the back. Mm. And then this little cutout is hiding your dump valves, the black and gray valve. And okay. those tanks, we'll see them when I go underneath, but those tanks are both outside. Okay, and why would you want a full length running board on the driver's side? Well, it, uh, oh, that's, before I answer that, that's the, uh, the exhaust for the Webasto gasoline oh, powered heater the full length running board on the driver's side is kind of a good thing because if you're going through brush or something that helps keep things from brushing up or scraping on the side of the van okay so it's it's a measure of protection for your, your the side panels on the van all um, right so wabasto gas heater that's mm -hmm. very interesting so does it have its own gasoline tank or? no no it draws off the main vehicle tank okay. um i've never seen one on an rv oh awning style windows if you didn't <laughs> Didn't just tell. All right, here we are on the front of the van, and this is pretty standard ProMaster stuff. There okay. I am taking a look at the uh, the fairing myself, and that's going to do it for the van. For the outside of the van, yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I got a little excited there. Um, all right, so now we're going on to the inside, and we always like this uh, general walking in shot. Yeah, I like the feel of this one. It's, it's kind of modern. Uh huh. Kind yeah. of a uh, almost utilitarian, but this is sort of the central feature right. of this particular. This is the floor highlight plan. of this model, I think. Yeah, so it's an electrically adjustable raising lowering bed that mm -hmm. runs lengthwise. Oh, and it's huge. It's almost as big as a queen. Do you remember the measurements it's on it? Sixty by seventy six. Yeah, yeah, and that's really big for inside a van. Yeah, and and like I said, it's not constrained by the width of the van there. Now, yeah. so now we've got the bed all the way up. Here, yeah, and there's and tons of storage here. Look at all this open open space. Yeah, and there are I think a total 6 D rings, yeah. for tying down cargo. Yep. And you know, it's you were able to sit there, so it's yeah. not like super cramped. No, right there is where the water heater is where you're just coming from. Where I'm reaching from. Okay. And now up here there is some water connections for an exterior shower, right, hot and nice. cold water. Right so there we go with that. Um, like I said, you were able to sit under there, I think, but you know, I wouldn't spend a lot of time. I wouldn't ride there. Right. 12 volt outlet right there and the 120, 120 volt outlet. outlet next right. to it. Now on the other side, you can't, there's a switch for the bed. Um, right. Try so you've not got to one up that. front and you got one in the back. So yeah, some options. lights under there. Now the right underneath where you just padded there, that's mm -hmm. the, uh, the Truma AquaGo. That's how you would access that from the back. Okay. That kind of And that open up. space had something in it too. The inverter, right? Yeah. The inverter is, well, there's storage, right. but then the inverter is under that thing that you've got your hand on Okay. There. I think it was, uh, what size? Was 500 it? watts. Okay. So you're not running the air conditioner on it, but you can run some other stuff. And you see there's, there's like a space underneath it. It's, it's venting for the inverter. So got it. Okay. The, it doesn't overheat. All right. And uh, carbon monoxide detector, whatever we've got up front and that's sort of under the bed okay one other thing to show you from the back is you can't see it so much here but when i get to the top you'll see there's velcro oh yes all the way around yeah and that's for your screen right they have a uh, a bug screen that they provide that uh that velcros up in place okay all right so from all the way up now we're taking the bed all the way down so that we can kind of show you the rest of the features in the back. Okay. And first, again, look at all the space yeah. in the bed. Yeah, and this storage is really surprising too. The, yeah. There's a lot of storage in here. But now the space in the bed kind of, uh, look at there you go. Yeah. All the room you need. Um, <laughs> kind of got us curious. And we actually came back the next day to try some other things with this bed. Like, like how, what if we put the bed all the way up? Yes. Could Can you, you sleep on it? Could you sleep in it? And this is higher than our bed in land. <laughs> yeah, <right>? but you <laughs> could. You one could. person. Those cabinets take a lot of your bed space off to the side that high. But right, but you could. You could. 
Yes. So it's doable. Um, not recommended. <laughs> and this is sort of midway with the bed. So like if you had bikes underneath, for example, mm-hmm. you'd wind up sleeping with your bed here-ish. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, those doors on the cabinets, this is, brings up a good point. Those doors, they all slide. Yeah, which was smart because then you're not bonking your head on it if you need to get anything out of it. Right, because the, the bed could be at any height. And right. so to have to open up and what's there behind the sliding doors. There we go. Yeah. Storage. Um, this is, I believe, on the driver's side Mm. and there's two storage cabinets there and again the doors slide so that you don't have to like roll over to make room for a door to lift up or something like that yeah yeah and again they're very utilitarian they're metal and yeah metal and brackets and stuff like that um a little bit below that we have uh windows and then some more storage and this one is really long yeah and deep too though yeah down there ways you can get a lot in that almost the length of the bed so like fishing poles oh there's that screen we were talking about Mm -hmm. um but like fishing poles or something would be no problem in this particular uh particular cabinet Mm -hmm. all right um pleated shades because you know, and there's only a shade. There's not a bug screen. Well, that's because that's built into the window. Right. The screens are built into the bottom of the window there. Right. And again, those are awning style windows. If you didn't catch that up front. Yep. Um, a little light switch, kind of a reading light. It just goes on that one side of the bed. Right. Now, these are interesting. Yeah, they're speakers for the entertainment system. But behind that, they built storage. Yeah, that's clever. You don't see it. Now, I wouldn't store anything metal back there. Um, <laughs> speaker, speaker. You would find it stuck conflict. to your speaker magnets. Okay. Um, yes. The USB outlet's really cool. Look at that. The lights are on a switch. Right. You can turn the lights on and off. Right. So if it's dark and you need to see to plug in, you can turn it on. And then turn it back off to go to sleep. Clever. Yep. Okay. And over here on the other side, again, another cabinet behind the speaker, which All I think right. is just usually the space behind speakers is just, you know, blocked off. You can't get to it. Mm-hmm. All right. On the back doors, we have more pleated shades and those straps hanging down. That's how they keep their doors from flying open in the yes, wind. Yes, that's right. Okay. So that's it for the back. Now on the passenger side, another sliding door. Right. And that strap there is for the bed. So you kind of got to work around that, but that's yeah. okay. It still works fine. Yep. And that's a little kind of, we'll call it a nightstand sort of area where you could put maybe like a phone or something. There's mm. another reading light. Okay. And we have another one of these storage compartments on right. this side. This one is not quite as long, but it's just as deep. But even at that, it's mm-hmm. still a pretty good size. Yep. You can get a lot in there. All right, now, again, another pleated shade. Thank you very much. And the next cabinet, this one with the sliding door, pretty interesting. It's actually like a wardrobe. Yes. So that goes all the way down to the floor of the van. So you can hang things like dresses, suits, anything long you could hang in there. Yeah, it goes down. I don't know if that's all the way to the floor, but it's a good ways. Okay, yeah. So, and again, sliding doors because you might need to get to it with the bed in any position. Right. And up top, we've got more cabinets. We have just, uh, you know, regular storage. And that's going to kind of round it out, I think, yeah. for the back. But again, the... that is just so much storage back there around that bed. And a lot of it is hidden. Yeah. And you don't really notice it. And I, and I like how they made it usable even with the bed in any position. Oh, since the bed could be high, they've made this. So that you can get into the bed if it's at a position yeah. that is not uh, not necessarily comfortable to get to from the floor. Right. I kind of wish we had this in Lance. <laughs> nice little <laughs> step up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now it's time for everyone's favorite dudes in bathrooms. <laughs> well, I like to show me in the bathrooms because I'm the bigger of the two of us by a long way. Right. And I think it helps with scale, seeing the bigger person. But right. anyway, this bathroom, it is small. I mean, there's just no getting around that. It's right. small. But you're getting that huge bed back there because of it. Right. So. And I actually took some different shots that you'll see later because it's kind of small. Mm-hmm. So you will need a shower curtain. There's the track for it. You'll want to keep water like off the pleated shades on the windows and off the off the doors. So you'll need to use that shower curtain when okay. you shower. And there it is. Oh, and that panel there is glass. I know. It's neat. It lets in light. And there's a, there's a hole at the top. And the bottom. And yeah. the bottom. And that is for ventilation in the shower. There's not a separate vent like in the shower itself. Oh, yeah. That's true. Okay. All right. So now here's like a medicine cabinet kind of cabinet. Um, and there are two light switches on the other side. I think it's for accent lights. Right. And then the overhead lights as well. Yes. Right. Okay, cool. So that's the lighting. Now there's a towel rack and there's the sink. There's not a separate shower head. Right. The shower head is just the sink right there. It'll, it pulls out and yeah. you would shower yourself with that. Mm-hmm. There's the drain for the shower. And uh, this is the shot I was talking about. That's me actually sitting on the commode 
with my pants on. Um, <laughs> and that's how much room I have between my knee. You could even see it in the reflection there. Between with, my knees and the door. With the door shut. So it's doable. Or you could just use the door open. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I probably don't want you leaving the door open. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, so now here we are in the galley, and this is a 3.5 cubic foot compressor-driven refrigerator. Yes, it's one of two fridges in the coach, which is another way that this coach is so unique. Very much so. Now, up here we have a pretty standard uh, propane cooktop, but that extra little flippy-uppy thing there mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, it's going to protect your bed from getting any splatter on it. Ah, good. So now behind there, we have a grill, which provides ventilation for the fridge, but there's some interesting switches. Well, on the right there, that's just a 120 volt outlet. Right, and that's the switch for the bed. Right. But this other white switch here. On the left. Yeah, yeah, that is an interesting solution. So you can use that to select and either run the microwave or the outlets off of the inverter. Okay, and why is that? Well, it was what they came up with to keep people from overloading the inverter and sort of blowing it up. Yeah, so, okay. Pretty Clever. ingenious. I liked it. Um, pretty standard RV sink with a flip down faucet. That purple balloon is just because it was winterized. <laughs> yeah. Um, and below the sink, there should be plenty of storage. Yeah. It's got a utilitarian look under there. You see those metal brackets. Yeah. Like yeah. It's very, it's, it's not functional, functional, not homey, I guess. Yeah. So there we go. Plenty of storage under there. Mm -hmm. um, up above, we have some switches. I think you're, we'll talk about most of that stuff later, but you're going to work I'm some showing light the lights. Yeah, just a bunch of different light switches up there. Different parts of the coach. Uh -huh. And also up top, we have a microwave. A teeny tiny a baby microwave. microwave. Aw, look at that thing. Well, it runs off the 500 watt inverter. Well, that's impressive. And, you know, you, you can get a mug of water in there for coffee. Frozen burrito. Frozen burrito, right. A fit frozen burrito. <laughs> sure. Um, more storage up above. I like how they put the, the weight rating for each of their cabinets right in the cabinet. That's huh. kind of cool. Oh, that is. Now, this would be the second of the two fridges. This is another compressor driven refrigerator this one's 2.1 cubic feet so a little smaller right but i like this because if you're going on like a really short trip just like an overnighter you could just run one fridge yeah and that would be totally fine you yeah, save free, the juice free up some of your energy yeah, yeah sure so they've made use of the space above the fridge by putting in that uh, little shallow utensil drawer okay this is a paper towel holder. Yes. You know what my favorite thing about it is? What? Mel couldn't get to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not tempt fate, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now over here, that is a vent for the uh, for the refrigerator that's back there. Okay. And that's pretty much going to do it for the galley. All right, so let's check out that ceiling. Yeah, it's aluminum. And remember when I remodeled DOS Bus, I put in an aluminum ceiling, and I, I like it. I loved that, too. Yeah, so there was a, the inside of the Dometic Penguin right there. There's the inside of the Max Air fan. And that nice cover. Yep. Now, up here, we have, that is a sea level tank monitor ah, system. We eh. just did a video on those. That's right. I love it, and I've put it on every RV we've ever owned. Um, that is the temperature control for the Webasto air heater, the, the gasoline-fired heater. Okay, and then some light switches. I already showed those. Yep, that is just a thermometer. Nice. <laughs> Nothing else. Now, that, that other switch that's up there, that is the switch for the awning lights. Oh, yeah, it lets you know if the lights are on. Right, because if you rolled up the awning yeah. with the lights on, you'd never know. And there's the control for the Truma Aquago, the water heater. Okay. Now, up front here, across the entryway, we'll call it, that is a MPPT solar charge controller for those 400 watts of solar panels okay. that we have on the roof. And let's see. Uh, this is a master light switch. Boom. Oh, it just turns everything off with the, yeah. the hit, hitting that? Okay. Yep. But there's also a dimmer function oh. on it. So you'll see here they're getting dimmer. Oh, yeah. A little sort mood of. lighting. There you go. So <laughs> dimmer. A um, couple extra light switches up there. Yay. And then up here, there's this uh, cabinet in what is affectionately referred to as the pizza oven. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's nothing in there. We couldn't get good lighting in there. Yeah, it's just a wide open space up yeah. there. Shaped like a pizza oven. <laughs> um, okay, so now over here on the side, there are more storage cabinets, continuing with that sliding door theme. Mm -hmm. And there are two cabinets up there, and it's actually split in half. So oh, there yeah, you go. so you can't get through. Side yeah, you to couldn't, side. couldn't put anything really long in there, okay. for example. There's plenty of storage for long stuff. Right. Now, this is another 12 volt outlet back here. Oh, there we nice. go. Okay. Um, and down below, 
This, these seats are very comfortable. They are. They feel like your driver's seat or passenger seat. They're very firm. They reminded me of an airplane. And they have a, they have a proper shoulder belt. Mm-hmm. So plenty of security and safe travel for passengers in these seats. And they're reclined, so they're, they'd be comfortable for a longer trip. The next day, we wondered, what would it be like if we were both in there? Yes, yeah, so we wanted to show you. You can fit. It's tight. Uh, this so. is my side. And mom and dad would have to separate us. Yeah, if... we'd be fighting in no time if we had to sit <laughs> no that No time close. flat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, underneath that seat, there is some storage. And uh, again, not good lighting in here, but there's plenty of room under there. Yeah, it's and... just open under there. Yeah, there's some obstructions from like the chair supports. Ooh, and now this floor space. This is kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. It just flips up. And then that whole thing basically is accessible as floor storage. And that one that my arm is in now goes way back up under the seats, right? I think that's what we're yeah. going to try to show here. So again, lots of room for stuff to store in there. And again, it's kind of hidden storage, so it's out of the way. So yep. it's very nice. So now you might have noticed there's no table. It's because it is a freestanding table. So the mystery of the table is now solved. Yes. First, you take out the base, and that's what goes there. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those cup and pole tables. And generally, I'm not a fan of them. I find them a little fussy. But in this floor plan, this is what you get. Well, and plus, we're lazy. So we don't want to have to, <laughs> you know, set things up. So True. I, I think that's the other thing. But... True. But now this one you can set up in two ways. You can set up a small table, mm-hmm. like a little dinette bistro kind of thing. Or you can put it in this other cup. Up, and then it flips out to a much larger table. Yeah. And, and that's very nice, yeah. that size. That's what you'd use for dining. Now, I'm not sure how sturdy this would be if I were actually to try to work on it all day. Right. James like still has a day job, and he likes to set out a lot of electronics, so I don't know how yeah. that would be. Well, I guess one benefit of that freestanding table, you could take it outside. Oh, yeah. That's a good option. All right. So now here we are going up into the cab, and you can see here, I like how they've said, you know what? Those cab seats are just not part of the living area when you're going to bed. Done. <laughs> Pull the curtain and done. <laughs> (laughs) They didn't try to make any concessions for keeping that space in. That's just, you know what, we're just pulling that close. (laughs) So, great. All right, so there's that. There are a couple other interesting things up in this cab that bear pointing out. So one of them is this little table right here. Yeah, yeah, that was interesting. I've never seen anybody do that before. No, now it's permanently attached, but it does hinge and rest in that cup holder below. Yes, but you can still access the cup holders below. Right, the the two side ones. And so now you've got a little table and four cup holders. Yeah. The other thing to show up in the cab is this switch that we get to way up on the dash. That's kind of the master control switch for the Webasto gas-fired furnace. Huh. Like an on-off kind of thing, you could just turn it off right okay. there. And since it uses fuel from the, you know, from the vehicle's tank, it kind of makes sense, I yeah. guess. Now that is the control panel for the inverter, ah. which we had not previously seen. That's where they put it. Okay. All right, and then I guess also on there there are a couple light switches. Hooray, hooray! <laughs> but now this Webasto that I keep talking about, it's right here under those uh, kind of airliner seats. That gray black box on the bottom that is the interior unit for the Webasto gas-fired heater. And we're back outside, so that must mean... It's time to go underneath. And here's the first thing I saw underneath, is that full-size spare. Ah. Now, that copper line right there, that's propane. Okay. And this is the view from the passenger side looking towards the driver's side. There's uh, the the sewer hose storage, but not a lot behind the rear axle. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Um, The propane valve, notice a manual valve, no electronic solenoid that could possibly go wrong. Propane valve is there. Um, This would be the gray tank, and it's a fairly large gray tank. Good. There we go. And I did not see any water lines underneath. There's the propane tank. Um, It's not huge, but, you know, you're only running the hot water off of it and 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 the the cooktop. Yeah, the cooktop, yeah. But there's the propane tank. Now, this is the black tank, and it's a fairly large black tank, actually. Hmm. There's the dump valve, and there is the tank. Sorry for the shakiness. There's not a lot of room under there. And that silver thing is the exhaust for the Webasto. And then you can see it coming right up through there. 
And that's going to do it for our review of the Safari Condo XL Flex. Yes, a very interesting coach that has that manual theme going, which is really cool. Yeah, they had like a manual step to right. get in. The manual awning. A manual propane valve. Right. So there's no solenoid to worry. There's less things to break. Keeping right. it simple. I like I, that. I like that too. Yeah. The other thing I like is that I feel like I bagged a unicorn today. <laughs> yes, we had to come to Canada to finally get this review. And we're excited. We finally did. That's right. And if you want to buy a Safari Condo, it sounds like a trip to Canada is in your future, too. <laughs> That's going to do it for now. We'll see you later. Bye.